Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I am Yvette and today's video is going to be about creating baskets for gifts. So recently I created a gift basket for my sister-in-law's 65th birthday and this basket received so many likes and comments because I did something a little out of the box. So I started out with knowing well, I should say first, you need to know the person that you are making the gift box for. So if it's something really simple, like a wedding present or a baby shower gift, then that is simple because you know you need to get the couple something for their home. Or if it is a baby shower gift, you know that it's gonna be something very specific for the baby or the mother of the baby. But when it's a birthday gift, it's important to know a little bit about the birthday person because that helps you get your ideas and get your creative juices flowing for what it is that you need to put inside of their gift box. So for me, I knew that my sister-in-law loved the sangria that I make for different parties and events that our family have. So I started with that idea in mind that I wanted to make some sangria for her. And so that started the actual idea for the box. So I'm gonna pop a picture up here so you can actually see the design of it and the process that I actually used to get to the finished product. But it always starts with, who are you making this gift box for? What do you know about that person? and then your creativity needs to go from there. So I knew I needed red wine. I knew I needed a wicker box because I wanted it to have a country theme because she lives in a rural area, so a country theme is good. And then once I knew I was gonna make the sangria, I needed red wine, I needed a wicker box, and I was going with a country theme, then everything just spilled over and the creativity kept going from there. So when I talk about having a country theme, this is the wicker type box that I am talking about. So you can find these at Home Goods, Michaels, Ross's, all sorts of places. They come in different um, shades, they come in different sizes and different shapes. And so depending on the gift that you are creating, you got to figure out from the very beginning what size do you need your wicker basket to be. So this size is a little bit smaller than what I use for her gift and only because this is one that I just have sitting here um, in my temporary housing. So I decide on the wicker box. Then I knew I needed to get some mason jars because I needed something to once I complete the sangria to put the sangria inside of. And so because it was a country theme basket, then I knew I needed to get some mason jars. Okay, so this particular jar is not a mason jar because a mason jar would have mason on it. Um, and then they have mason jars that have handles, some without handles, and they come in different sizes, but they typically have the word mason on it. And then of course, on a mason jar, the top is different. It seals so that if you're putting preservatives and things like that in it, it has a different type of seal. But this is just a, twi a twist top jar that looks like a mason jar. And so once I found these mason jars at Home Good, but you can find them at Michael's and other places, uh, Hobby Lobby, lots of stores carry the mason jar, including Walmart. And so I get the mason jars. Then I get into the actual design. So this is where your creativity really has to hone in. So in order to make it look country, wicker basket, and then there's nothing more country than some burlap. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I got one spool of burlap. And then I got one spool of a burlap a burlap ribbon that has the wire inside of it because I knew I was gonna make a bow for the front of the basket. And then once I did that, I took some pieces of cardboard because this is where you're going to put your happy birthday note 
and even the ingredients that go inside of the sangria on. And then I took smaller pieces of twine to wrap around the mason jar and also to thread my note through um, for the basket and to attach my bow to the basket. I used twine for that. And so once I had all the things, a few uh, flowers that looked uh, on the rural side, looks like something that you would find in a field that's kind of on the country, uh, wildflower side, like I got some little tan baby's breaths and um, other flowers. And then once you have all those things, then you start creating the basket. So I filled the bottom of the basket with regular white uh, construction paper because I needed to build the basket up because I knew if I set the mason jars in the depth of the basket, they would not stand up as tall as I needed them to because remember, the depth of her basket is deeper than this. So I had to actually build the basket up. So I started with um, construction paper that I balled up to put on the bottom to give the basket some height. And then once I got it to the right height that I needed, then I took the burlap and I started to intertwine the burlap throughout the basket, leaving some over the side so that it would give some character to the basket. So it was draping over the side and draping through the middle. But before I put the sangria inside of the jar, I actually put the jars inside of the basket empty so that I can make sure I had the right height on the basket in order for the mason jars to stand up um, perfect on a slant so that they had the right height, they were on a slant and they were perfect inside of the basket before I filled the jars up. Then after I got the basket just where it needed to be, I had all of the uh, burlap intertwined through, I had built um, the bow with the burlap and white wired ribbon. Then it was time to fill the mason jars with the sangria, tighten the jar down, use a piece of twine on the outside of the jar to make a bow, and then place the jars inside of the basket. So here I will show you the finished product. And then throughout this clip, I will show you how it is that I went through the various processes of creating this basket. And in the description box, I will give you the recipe for a simple uh, fruit sangria. So for this sangria, this is a red wine not a sweet red, but a dry red wine. And the fruit that was used was pineapple and blueberries. And um, sometimes it depends on the wine. If you go with a white wine, then you wanna use fruits like mango, peaches, and pineapple. Cause then it's this really pretty light colored wine. And then the fruit inside of it is light colored. But if you're using a red wine, you can go with the different berries. You can do blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, pineapple, strawberries, and then it gives the sangria a darker color outside of the pineapple. So there's red wine, mixed fruit, simple sugar, which is just water and sugar, and ginger ale to make the sangria. And then once you do that, you stir it real good. It should be cold because what you're gonna have, if you chill the wine, which I didn't, but if you chill the wine and you bring in a chilled uh, ginger ale, then it'll be pretty cold and you can actually enjoy it the same day you make it. But if not, then you wanna put it in mason jars or some other kind of container and store it in the refrigerator so that if you're serving it to guests, it'll be nice and cold. But I will put the recipe for the sangria in the description box, just in case you're interested in making it. And then I'll also put the um, 
recipe for a light colored wine with different berries and fruits in it. But at that point, you can play around with the types of fruits that you wanna have in it and the types of wine that you wanna put in it. But I just recommend that you don't use a sweet wine because you're going to use a simple sugar recipe. If you do use a sweet wine, then you don't need the simple sugar recipe. So until the next time, I hope you enjoy um, creating a sangria country basket and that you enjoy my sangria recipe. Until the next time I look shoppers, keep shopping and being creative.